You know, I was never much of a Pokemon guy as a kid. Not having a Nintendo DS probably helped. I just could never really get interested in this type of thing up until now. Turns out all I had to do was combine Pokemon with Guerrilla Warfare and now you have my attention. Welcome to Pal World! For the very few who aren't familiar, it's an open world Pokemon-like game where you have the splendid choice of either befriending the critters here or committing acts that can get you a spot on World Star. I'll be honest, I could have taken this one a lot more seriously, but where's the fun in that? Today, I'm spending 100 days here to see what sort of horrible things I can do for your entertainment. If you guys like this and want to see me play more Pal World in the future, leave a like, and as always, grab a snack, settle in, and watch me do various things to piss off PETA. First things first, you gotta make a character. Ideally one that strikes fear into your enemies. Somebody that has the will to dominate all life and rule this earth. In other words, I'm rolling with David Goggins for this one. Okay, Gaggins is here. Let's see what this gorgeous island has to exploit. First, I find this weird looking statue that evidently serves as a fast travel. That's always welcome in my book. I also notice this random person sitting there, so I guess I'll talk to them. Ah, I see you're being pessimistic. I hate that attitude. That gun doesn't scare me. Time to teach you a lesson. We can't be having that attitude here. Oh wait, the police are here? Gaggins never goes down without a fight. Okay, fair enough. I had to try. Buckshot and I never really really got along anyway. I need to feel better about myself, so I'm just gonna prey on the weak for a while. I did get a bit low on health at one point, but that's okay because David Goggins never loses. I made my way down the hill and caught sight of a deer. It was gorgeous. I wanted it. I would have it uh, at some point. At the base of the hill, I found this big dumb looking mammoth thing and instantly knew I had to fight it. It should be no surprise to anyone that it didn't take any time for this thing to absolutely delete me from existence. I respawned back at the top of the hill and made my way down it again. At the bottom, there was another fast travel as well as another NPC. Don't worry, buddy. I don't want to fight you. Instead, I'm going to imprison you with these wooden foundations. Unfortunately, the church ruins right next to him completely stopped me from surrounding him, so I'll have to settle with mostly surrounding him. I set up a couple storage boxes, and evidently I'm so cool that I don't even have to hammer in the correct direction. I call it the Goggins effect. I then stumbled across this chest, and it gave me some money. I like money. Money is good. What? A cute looking fox thing? Rah, beat it up! I think the little guy accidentally hit the mammoth. Feels nice not to be the only one. I'll just go find another cute fox thing to enslave. <laughs> You're mine now. After returning to my wannabe base, I began cooking some berries and my new little friend helped. Thanks, buddy. I'll need these for my protein shakes later on. Now I could really use some tools, even though I love using my fists. For this, I needed to make a workbench, which is very cheap, fortunately. I mean, come on. All this opportunity for the price of two wood? Say less. On day two, I enslaved a few more fox sparks. They were so cute. I kept trying to find myself one of those deer, but they were always in a pair, which intimidated me. Finally, I found a single one by itself and went toe to toe. And that went about as well as you imagined, dear viewer. I crafted a bow and used it to help catch some more fox sparks because if I caught 10 of them, I'd get an XP bonus. The NPC said so. NPCs are always right, I guess. Later in the day, I found another deer all by itself. Now I have weapons to help me. I can't lose now. God damn it. I got my stuff back and noticed that there were some sleeping deer. I began my first degree assault and began beating it with my torch. Some other random pal also got hit in the crossfire, which helped me a little bit. The deer didn't like that though, and it quickly removed that nerd from the fight. It was a worthy yeah. sacrifice, however, because I finally caught a deer. Yippee! I needed a means to repair my tools, so the next morning I set up a repair station. You know, to repair stuff that needed repairing, like your dating life. Pretty much most of my time in the daylight was spent running amok and slaving all who dared to cross paths with me. Except for the mammoth dude, we were chill now. There was this one little penguin man that just yeah. didn't want to submit to my will. Okay bro, you're wasting my pal's fears. How about you just die? I'll catch others of your kind later. I had leveled up a few times out on my hunting spree and was now specifically at level 9. I learned some engrams and began crafting a shield thingy from the wrong side of the workbench. 
Only David Goggins could do this. I also set up this PAL workbench, which would allow me to make things to let me interact with PALs on my battle roster. All I really had currently besides the deer were a bunch of fox sparks, so I made the harness thingy they needed. I don't really know what it does, but I made it. Day four, I harvested every single paldium rock I could find. I needed a lot of this stuff to make lots of pal spheres, so having some extra never hurt. I found a large, sparkly pal called a Gumas and beat the ever-living tar out of it. Why? Instinct, I guess. Anyway, I killed it and got some unique loot out of it. Also, I love how the bodies never go away and you can kind of just push them around. Adds insult to injury. Then I did a bit of grinding for some basic resources and used it all to craft a metric butt-ton of arrows. So a unique thing about PAL World is that it has a base leveling mechanic, which works by filling a certain criteria by building certain structures in the base through this thingy called a PAL box. In this case, for me, it meant putting down some PAL beds and a feeding box. Every new level allows you to have one extra pal working in your base, and eventually I'll be able to have multiple bases at a high enough base level. After getting all of that out of the way, I went out at dusk to catch even more pals. More pals means more XP! The next day I crafted myself a three-shot bow because it sounded cool, and we all know that David Goggins only uses cool things. Like your mom. I did a lot of mining so I could craft pal spheres and even more arrows. Then I went pal catching until I ran out of spheres again. I'm starting to see how this might eventually get annoying. Day six, I'm doing more of that boring mining stuff so I could eventually make a furnace to smelt metal in. Ah, survival games and their metal mechanics. Speaking of metal, there was a deposit a little ways up the hill. I couldn't harvest the whole thing because this stuff is mad heavy, but I brought enough back to smelt into ingots, which I turned into nails, which I turned into an advanced workbench. Also, uh, my monkey caught on fire. I was a little concerned about him, but he didn't seem to mind. After some more metal-related grinding, I had enough to make myself a deer saddle, baby! I also made a metal pickaxe, but who cares about the upgrade when you can have a deer saddle, baby? You know, this is kind of annoying, but you already know David Goggins loves the grind. For the first time, I rode my noble steed and felt superior to everything. I explored further and eventually stumbled across this small NPC settlement in this area where all the grass was yellow, for some reason. Here, I found a merchant and sold some of the valuable things that sparkly Gumas gave me, and I used the revenue to get myself some more pal spheres. Now that I had all these spheres, you already know what I was back to doing. Remember, kid? Slavery is only cool if they aren't sentient. I got my chest desserts for that joke when I dismounted off my deer while swimming, which for some reason caused me to fall to the bottom of the river. Hey, um... I, I think I found a bug. I managed to climb up the side and got to a point where I could swim on the surface again, but this left my stamina low and caused me to drown. Well, that was embarrassing. Getting my stuff back was easy, and after I did, I made myself a crossbow and a metal axe. I did a bit more exploring and stumbled across my first field boss, Chill It. I fought it and got it low on health, and right as I threw a pal spear at it, it killed me. Come on. Come on. Yes! No way! I celebrated my half victory by upgrading to pelt armor back at home. I continued exploring further along the east coast on day 8, catching lots of pals as I went. I eventually ran out of pals fears, but I didn't really care and continued on with my adventure. Eventually, I came across this huge, wide open area with flat ground. The perfect spot for a base. I didn't have enough levels to build stone structures quite yet, so I acquired more pal spheres and continued catching stuff for experience. The next two days were spent relocating to the new base area. One nice thing about pal boxes is that you can fast travel between them, so that saved a lot of time. After having some stone platforms set up, I put down some metal storage because the wooden stuff is cringe. At this point, I'm pretty much just adding any helpful structures I can to my new area. This would help me level up my cool, very epic base that is also very cool, by the way. Among these structures were berry plantations. I promise I had no idea it was worded like that, but... You know what, let's just move on from that. I built a hot spring too. Unfortunately, it isn't for me. This is just here so that the pals won't unionize. On day 11, I paid another visit to that settlement from earlier so I could buy some more arrows and pal spheres. After that, I decided to continue exploring towards the central part of the map. I came across a syndicate thug campsite and wiped them out. Dumb nerds, that's what they get. It was also in this area where I encountered my first dire howls. Hey, you doggies? Of course I had to catch them. I needed some good boys on my side. Oh, another thing about syndicate camps, they always have a cage in the center with a pile inside that you can free. There you go, buddy. From one slave owner to another. I went on a huge capturing spree after that, including this Incineram that appeared to be fighting with the syndicate thugs. Nope, he's mine now. As I went on discovering, my travels took me down to a meadow where I found another syndicate camp. 
David Goggins is my name, extermination is my game. As soon as I found the next fast travel, I took it back home since my weapons and tools were pretty low on health. I don't know why I haven't mentioned this yet, but you can find eggs lying around in this game. If you have an egg incubator, like the one I'm setting up here, you can hatch them into pals. The last thing I did that day was set up a medieval medicine bench, even though I will most likely never use it. All that medical stuff is for nerds. As I was getting some metal on day 12, I couldn't help but notice that this deer was chilling out all by himself. Hey, don't mind if I do. I used the metal to put down a cooler box, and this let me level up my base again. This time I got it to a high enough level that actually allowed me to have a second base somewhere else. I would have to be strategic about this if I wanted my new base to be effective. Right now getting metal was pretty annoying, so ideally I wanted to set up somewhere where there was a plentiful metal supply. I spent some time exploring and eventually found this excellent spot on top of a mountain with several metal deposits. There was this big blue dude called a Relaxaurus in the way, but I happened to have a spare Gigasphere on me, so catching him wasn't a problem. I had to find a fast travel and pay a visit back to the main base for some stone, then returned and began setting up my new mining base. I also made sure to set up a mining site so I could have a source of stone there. The following day, I placed a bunch of PAL beds and put every single PAL I had available with the ability to mine to work. A lot of the day was spent updating infrastructure, adding beds, and getting a food source set up for the PALs at the mining base. Eventually, I returned home out of boredom and found myself trying to catch some nearby rubies. Because I could? Not, not really sure, I just kinda did. After that, I put down some smelters in the mining base. Now we're in business. After improving the mining base and adding more PALs to it for the first portion of day 14, I finally began to grind for metal. I've played plenty of ARC, I know how fast a fella can run out of this stuff. At the main base, I set up some more metal storage, but quickly realized an annoying issue. My PALs weren't putting the wood and stone they were farming into the right chest. Idiots! All of them. I shuffled the chests around a bit so that the one with stone and wood was over by the door. Hopefully this would work. Then it was back to more exploration for me. I was quickly learning that this map was huge and I needed to start investigating. Obviously, I was still capturing pals as I went. The XP was way too good to ignore. I stumbled into another field boss later on, a Grintail. Less thinking, more fighting. Enslave it! Capture it! Put it to work! Who needs freedom anyway? Eventually, the sun began to set and it got way too dark to keep exploring, so I found the nearest fast travel and returned home. Oh yeah, I also set up a weapons workbench. <coughs> uh, yeah. A new day means more daylight, and more daylight means exploring. I continued catching as many pals as I could, but this inevitably led me to running out of spears. At one point, I was in this marshy area right next to a fast travel where a trio of gobfins seemed to decide I looked easy to bully. They were right, I barely managed to fast travel away with my life, but not before they got my deer. No worry, it's not dead. I won't be able to use it for a while though. Later on, I found my first cave and ventured inside. It was a lot bigger than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, boy. And there were a bunch of low level thugs in there that gave me gold and pal spheres when killed. Many twists and turns later, I found myself staring down another field boss, which was a jolt hog. Fighting it wasn't hard, but my chillet killed it before I could capture it. Upon leaving the cave, I ran into a tombat, so I caught it. I mean, why not? It's right there. The last thing I did that day was add in a ceiling to my crafting hub, which would be a second floor later on. Day 16, I crafted my first gigaspheres, as well as a bunch of basic pal spheres. After that, it was off to the settlement to sell some more valuable loot to the merchant there. Nice. I went home to craft Chillet and Direhal saddles before heading back out. A cool thing about this game is that the map tells you where the field bosses are if you've explored the area around them. I used this to find another field boss, as a Robe or something. You already know I was going to catch that silly goose, and of course I was successful. David Goggins is always successful. After that, I wandered around capturing the various pals in the area, getting lots of experience and food. Eventually, I returned home to cook said food. Goggins needs his balanced diet, you know? I also set up a ranch. I'm not sure what it does, but I'll probably figure it out later. Maybe. Another egg finished incubating and it gave me a pain king. Cool, I guess? There were some syndicate thugs that made the mistake of getting a little too close to my base. Let's just say they will no longer be a problem. Hunting and catching pals is going to be a very common theme in this video, if you haven't already noticed. Sometimes you just have to be the bad guy. I decided to go into another cave, and it was identical to the first one. Aside from the thugs, there were some newer pals in there, which I of course caught for the XP. The final boss was a Kilimari, and I caught it. Kilimari? What a dramatic name. Out of the goodness of my heart, I cleared out another syndicate camp at the end of the day. I'm just such a good person. Day 18, I caught some alpacas. 
Not really much else to say there. I paid a visit to my mining base to collect the metal, which had finished smelting. With this metal, I took it back home to craft a musket and some more gigaspheres. I eventually found myself at an access point to a boss arena as I caught a bunch of deer for XP. Of course, I began fighting the boss, Catris. I didn't do so hot, though, and it ended up getting me killed in the end. I returned to freezing and without armor for my stuff. I fought her again, and this time did so a lot smarter. This made all the difference as I caught her in the end. On day 19, I found two Mammarists duking it out. I waited until they were very low on health and took one out with my crossbow. I tried to catch the other, but it quickly became obvious that I would need a better sphere in order to do this, so I killed it instead. At this point, I was going around and defeating any field boss I could find, like this here King Paka. There's something about enslaving bosses that gives you a feeling of power. As I continued to explore, I came across another cave, but this one had a big tunnel. I tried to follow it, but it was way too dark and I didn't have a torch, so I went back home and cooked the raw food I had instead. I returned to that cave the next day, and it turned out to lead me to another boss fight. At first, it didn't seem to be going too well for me, but eventually, I accidentally ended up letting it die because my Azurobe went god mode on it. After the fight, I caught a few extra pals to console myself before finding this weird-looking yellow rock. I realized it was a sulfur deposit as soon as I began to mine it. I dropped it off at the mining base and began grinding for more metal. It wasn't too long before a raid on my base began, although they all spawned way down at the bottom of the cliff. It got even funnier as I went to fight them and realized they didn't even care if I hit them. They just didn't fight back. They all just sat there at the bottom letting themselves die. I got a whole bunch of coarse ammo from this. Easy bullets, baby. The excitement died down, and at the end of the day, I finally had enough metal to upgrade to better armor. All right, let's try this Fangalope fight again. Well, I would have, but he didn't seem to have respawned when I got there, so I decided I would come back later. I got some more pals and wiped out another syndicate camp as I passed the time. I explored even further north, and the pals in that direction were a lot tougher to catch. It was getting dark again, so I paid another visit to the cave to check if the Fangalope respawned, and it did! Alright, bucko, this time you're mine. God damn it. I'm just gonna go home and build a tower. You know, choofy things. Not really much to see on day 22. Just kind of worked on this tower for the entire day. The first half of day 23 was spent building as well. Later, I made another attempt at the Fengalo fight. This time, I actually caught him, but that was mostly because he knocked out my Azurobe before she could kill him. Another cool thing you can do is upgrade your pals using these things called pal souls. As long as you have a statue at your base, you can do this, which I did to my Fengalo as much as I could. Why? I don't know. I guess I'm just emotionally attached after trying to catch it for all that time. I made some more nails, which turned into fancier pal beds, which I set up to upgrade my base once again. That evening, I finally had enough metal to make myself a fangalope saddle. Time to get my yeehaw on, you know what I'm saying, guys? <laughs> Yeah, of course you wouldn't. Guys, this Fangalope is an amazing improvement in terms of travel. He's especially good at destroying my enemies, especially the ones that drop bullets when they die. Using these bullets, I fought another boss called a Bushy. This was the most anime looking character I had seen so far, so when I caught him, you bet I was gonna use him. I explored a little further north and caught a couple R Soxes. Get it? Because they're made of fire? Fire foxes? And fires where arson starts? Okay, I'll stop. I also got lucky and caught a bronze cherry with a low quality sphere. I don't know why I get lucky like this sometimes, I just do. Once again, it got too dark to continue, so I fast traveled home and went to bed. Hey, you know that tower I started? Well, I need to finish it, and it needs to be cool. So for the next four days, I worked on this thing. Cue the building montage. I finished the Great Tower on day 30, and once again, it was something I feel very proud of. I fast traveled off to a farther spot, and you can still see it! I'm so not used to this. Usually these types of things will have a render distance, but this is so freaking cool. Okay, 30 days in, and I think it's time to see what this funny boss tower thingy is all about. Hmm. Hmm. 
I might have been overleveled for that. After all the excitement, I decided to run another cave dungeon, and the dungeon boss was a Caperty. I caught her. You can't stop the Goggins train. I sold some things in the morning of the following day. David Goggins is always chasing that bag. The entire rest of the day, I grinded for metal at the mining base. I don't have any slaves, I mean pals, to mine the metal for me yet. The only time I stopped my metal mongering was to stop a quote unquote raid, but well, they don't really do anything, so it's more like free loot. Still grinding for metal on day 32, but I gotta say that these R soxes are so much better at kindling than the fox sparks are. At the main base, I crafted some prerequisite materials like cement, then added walls to the second floor of my crafting hub. After this was finished, I set up a production assembly line. This is pretty much just an expensive, fancy looking upgrade of the workbench. This bled me dry of metal, so guess what time it is? Back to the mining base. This also means more raids like this one. Guys, I think I broke the game. I don't think raids are supposed to go like this. Once I had more metal, I replenished my supply of gigaspheres. The next day, I continued to craft more spheres as well as some ammo for my musket. This was all to prepare myself for the next bout of exploration. There was so much to see and do. Early on, I ran into a sparkly lift monk, or lucky as the game calls it. I don't really care, I just enslaved it nonetheless. Then I realized it was right next to another field boss, a univolt. Of course I fight it, Goggins never runs from a fight, especially when you only have a 2% chance of capturing it. I don't know how I got that first try, but we'll just blame it on that signature choofy luck. I kept exploring up the western coast and eventually came across a bronze cherry field boss. Catching her was pretty simple, by that point it had gotten dark so I went home to sleep. I continued exploring on day 34, this time more centrally. I came across a higher level syndicate camp and decided to investigate. There were a couple of relaxoruses there, but they got murked before I could try to catch them. That's fine, I'll settle for the cage Toko Toko instead. And I'm still exploring and catching pals. I continued doing this into the wee hours of the day, including taking down another field box. It was called a sweeper. My inventory had run out of space from all the loot and eggs I had been collecting on my travels, so I returned home to put it all into storage. Day 35, I caught some more bronze cherries and found my first serpents as well. I tried fighting one to catch it, but uh, <laughs> that didn't work. I found another boss cave, and this one housed a bronze cherry aqua. Obviously I fought it, but got overconfident when her health got low. Surely a musket wouldn't kill her, right? God damn it. I attempted a second time to catch some serpents after leaving the cave, and at least this time I was successful. Man, imagine the terrible things PETA wants to do to me with all this enslavement going on. To be fair, I'm probably the most dangerous person on this island. Like this Pang King boss I found. That's right, buddy. Fear me. Once again, I sold stuff to the merchant at the settlement before continuing on my way. Funnily enough, I found two Mammarists duking it out once again in the same exact spot as before. I thought about attempting to catch one, but figured it was not going to be worth it with those chances. Guess I'll just keep exploring then. I haven't even discovered half of this map yet. Day 37, I cooked some food and finished incubating another egg, which gave me my 10th gear. Whoopee! Most of the day was dedicated to grinding for metal. I had gotten a blueprint for a better crossbow on my travels, and an upgrade was in order. All this metal was also for a generator, which I managed to have enough to make one before the end of the day. This would keep my univolt busy, and more importantly, I could use the production assembly line now. I began crafting the improved crossbow, but uh, 
Oh jeez, this is gonna take a long time. As the sun rose again the next day, I was still making this stupid crossbow. I hope it'll be worth it. After I finally finished it, I set some more eggs out so that they could incubate while I tried fighting the Bron Cherry Aqua for a second time. The fight went much better since I didn't kill it with a musket this time. <laughs> Who knew? Now I have a Bron Cherry Aqua under my command. That's not something you say every day. I fast traveled back over to where those gob fins were from before and journeyed north from there to see what I'd find. On my travels, I stumbled across a huge verdant egg. I didn't even know they got this big. That's what she said. It wasn't long before I found myself on the eastern coast, and in the distance, I could see what looked like a large desert, so of course I investigated. As I began to explore it, it quickly dawned on me that the pals here were way stronger than what I could handle at the current moment, so I began to make my way home. Instead of fast traveling on day 39, I explored more of the eastern coast as I returned to my main base. I just have this need to make sure all parts of the map are explored, so having all that unexplored space really bothered me. Once I got home, I incubated a marae, which looked kind of gross in all honesty. I put down a few stone walls on the perimeter, but I ran out of cement so I didn't get far. The last thing I did that day was attempt to fight and catch another boss, Petalia. Unfortunately, she died before I had the opportunity to catch her. Hey. I wonder how that happened. I caught some dinosaurs the next day and continued exploring for the sole purpose of filling out the map. As I went along, I caught more pals, although at this point that should pretty much be assumed. At one point, I found this small area with a bunch of lava and fire pals. I discovered a couple new pals called Wixens and caught a few. They put up a bit of a fight, but Goggins never loses. Day 41, I was still out and about. This time, I officially discovered a new faction called the Free Pal Alliance and wasted no time committing war crimes on them. What's this? A camp full of free pal members? We can't have that. No one will know I was here if I kill all of you. Speaking of clearing camps, I haven't gone after any syndicate camps in a while. For the rest of the day, I roamed around every syndicate camp I could think of, wiping them out for ammo. I fought yet another boss on day 42, the Quiver. Or Quiver, I don't know. There really isn't much to say for these fights, honestly. I just roll around, then blast them in that until they're low enough to capture. Bada bing, bada boom. After dropping my loot off at home, I continued my expedition north, there was another syndicate camp I ran into that had this humongous dude with a gatling gun. Lovely. Fortunately, it seems like a gatling gun is no match for my fangalope who messed this guy up. All I had to do was dome him with my crossbow and the job was done. Nice. After capturing a few more pals for the experience, I returned home to sleep the night away. At my mining camp, I reallocated my pals so that I had ones with better mining traits working. This way, I could actually have them working on metal rather than stone. As I left the base at one point, I ran into a funny looking black rock, which turned out to be coal as soon as I began mining it with my pickaxe. I went home now since I had the levels to make myself a better shield. A giga shield! After that, it was back to farming horse ammo from syndicate camps. While I was in the area, I cut the last few mil pack as I would need to get the 10 catch XP bonus. After that, I decided I had enough ammo for yet another boss fight. It was Lunaris, and it was a very hard fought battle. Somehow, once again, I managed to throw a Gigasphere right before getting killed. Come on. Come on. No way. It happened again. Day 44, I returned to the site of my death and recovered my stuff. Afterwards, I grabbed a bunch of ingots from the mining base so I could return to the main one to repair my armor. I wasn't really in the mood to explore, so I decided just to grind for metal. This is how I spent my time that day, and eventually I had gotten enough to set up a sphere assembly line. I was still missing some of the material to actually make it, though. Now I almost had a more effective way to craft spheres, but I didn't have any paldium to replenish my sphere supply. Yes, I have to grind for that too. At the end of the day, I fought another boss, the Relaxaurus Lux. This time, yeah. I wasn't able to fight it because I ran out of spears, so I just killed him. It was so sad. So tragic. Anyways, I'm gonna make more mega spheres. Those boss fights really depleted my supply of musket ammo. I wonder where I can get some more. Okay, I think we both knew. I just wanted to make it funny or something. I went into another cave dungeon, but for this time I only wanted the paldium rocks and coal deposits that were in there. It wouldn't be enough in the long run, but that's an issue I'd have to tackle later. One cave? Nah, why not make it two? I still have some weight capacity left in my inventory before I'll get encumbered. I dropped off all my loot at 
the main base, and while I'm looking in these chests, I didn't realize I had so many eggs. Remember that huge Verdant egg I found? Well, it finally finished hatching on day 46. The pallet gave me. Verdash was super good with handiwork though, so it was totally worth it. I finally got around to crafting a bunch of miscellaneous materials, and finally set up a sphere assembly line. Then I began making a ton of cement, some of which I used to craft a handful of hyperspheres. Of course, this cement was going to take a while to make, so I just set one of my wixens on it so I could go do other things. Like selling things to merchants. Ah, don't you love it when the NPCs have bottomless pockets of money to give you? Once that was all done, it was time to go after some more bosses. First, I went after Elfridren, and then fought and caught him. After that fight went better than I thought, I decided to go after another boss. It was this electric bird thingy called Beak Gun. Then I, um... Well, fought it and caught it. Yeah. Listen, I swear I'm not wiping out these syndicate thug camps for the sake of being unethical. I'm only doing it for the ammo. But I will say, there's something satisfying about taking their stuff. I caught some more pals for XP, ho-hum, and I even killed that Azurobi boss just to flex. I think I was bored. I can't remember. And I ran into this really creepy looking black marketeer. <laughs> Listen, I know they wanted to make him look shifty and untrustworthy, but I feel like if I make eye contact, he'll steal my IP address and post it on Twitter. Remember that Mamorous boss from the beginning? Well, now that I was stronger, it was time to try and catch him. It was still a higher level than me, but I still managed to get the upper hand. Alas, it died in the end before I could catch it. That was so sad. Day 48, I set up an improved furnace at the mining base, and I finally figured out what the coal was for. Refined ingots! I was immediately able to start smelting them due to the fact that I had collected coal for no reason in days previous. Then I realized that I was going to need a lot more coal. I tried to solve this by paying a visit to another cave dungeon to get it, and I quickly realized that I was going to have to level up my weight some more. I also got some Kilimari in there for the XP. Why not? Also, I can't get over that name, Kilimari. It's so corny. On a side note, I realized I haven't named a single one of my pals, so I named my Fengalope Orion. He would be the only pal I ever named ever again. Day 49, I noticed my bronze cherry was getting depressed. Tried to fix this by building a high quality hot spring and tossed her in. She seemed happy about that, so that's good, I guess? Then it was finally back to exploring once again, and I was going centrally again. I found a small desert there with lots of dig toys, stew muds, and some other critters I had gotten from eggs. I don't know if I pronounced any of their names right. Right, though. Listen, I didn't know where they came from, just what they were. That's just what happens when you steal children. But not, not that I would know, of course. As the sun set, I found some Gora rats next to a fast travel and worked on catching them. It became quickly apparent that having higher quality spheres was going to be very helpful the further north I went. I was in short supply of a few things in terms of material, so on day 50, I spent time trying to stock back up. I added another egg incubator to the base since the eggs I had been collecting all this time were piling up in storage. I'm not about to drown in eggs. What an embarrassing way to die. I tried revisiting one of the caves I had gone to coal for previously, but for some reason I couldn't get in. At first I thought it may have been a glitch, but after reloading the game it was still blocked off. Bruh. Fortunately, there are plenty of caves for me to plunder, so I visited a different one instead to get what I needed. I went to my mining base to grind out more metal ingots, but couldn't help but notice all this wood lying around. I guess some of my pals hate trees? Fine by me, free wood. A new kind of raid happened that night, one with flying pals. Of course, even though they had wings, they still somehow were stuck at the bottom of the cliff like all the others had been. Killing them, obviously, was a walk in the park. 2v1, pal world zero. For the first time in a long time, I actually crafted my own ammo for a boss fight. I know, weird, right? I continued exploring the central parts of the map, capturing pals for XP as I traveled. This included the desert where I caught some dig toys. Yeah. Finally, some pals with a work ethic that even David Goggins can be proud of. It started to get dark once again, but I just could not find a new fast travel anywhere. I did catch some cogniddos though, so at least there's that I suppose. I think it's time to give the Relaxaurus Lux boss another try, don't you? And would you look at that? He's as good as mine. At this point, fellas, let's just assume I'm selling things to the settlement merchant every other day. I'm getting so many sellable items that money is just flowing into my pockets. It'll all be used on charity and protein shakes, of course. I replenished my supply of spheres at home before heading back out to fight the Masanda Lux boss. Of course I caught him. I always catch them in the end. Say it with me, class. David Goggins never loses. I was still in a devilish mood, so I caught some Dino Blossoms until I had ten of them. Also. Devilish mood? Why would I say that? Forget about it. Instead, be satisfied as I grind for more cave resources. On day 53, I 
organize some more and dude, I'm gonna be honest, the amount of eggs I still have sitting around is really bugging me. I'm coping so hard right now. <laughs> Moving on from that, I set up a second improved furnace at the mining base to speed up production of refined ingots. To aid in this effort, I also put down some more pal beds along with putting up more mining pals to work. I went on yet another cave resource run and returned back to the mining base to grind for metal. Again. I'm dying inside. Things got more exciting again when I had a rematch with the Patalia boss, and this time I caught her! Get wrecked, idiot! Just because I was there, I captured a few bristles before going back home. Day 54, I placed down even more storage at the main base and crafted some high quality cloth. This would be used immediately to make another upgraded armor type for me out of refined metal. I set the stage to make a weapons assembly line by putting in a third floor in my crafting hub. I didn't have the metal to actually make the thing yet, so once again, it was off to the you-know-what base to slave away for more metal. While I was there, another new type of raid happened, and I was apparently being attacked by a gang of lovanders. I checked it out, and they were these weird pink bipedal pals. I saw an opportunity to get some more XP, so I caught several. I returned home with the metal I needed, and finally got to building that weapon assembly conveyor thingy. Out of pure curiosity, I read the bio for the Love Anderson. D oh. 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 I'm gonna go bleach my eyes now. You know what? It's been super dark in this base for the longest time, so I made a bunch of nails in order to place a bunch of lamps all over the base. Let there be light! Something, something, David Goggins! Okay, I'm done. The next day, I set up a tomato plantation just because I could. Mmm, tomatoes, I guess. I found this cool little valley area and explored it a little bit. I'm not really sure what I went there for, but it happened. I still had metal ingots on the mine, so I paid yet another visit to my mining base to get some. I got a little sidetracked, though, and went to the nearby syndicate camp just to commit some crime. Oh, hey, free serpent! You're mine now, nerd. I returned to the main base with the new wave of metal ingots and crafted quite a few things. First it was gigaspheres, then I moved on and made some cold resistant metal armor, then some more hyperspheres, followed by more polymer. So to summarize, I was holding down the F key for a very long time. I made even more hyperspheres on day 56, you could never have too many. I wanted to make some even better assembly lines, but for that I needed circuit boards. To make those, I needed polymer and quartz. Say what? There's quartz in this game too? Where do I get that? Pain. What's that? Another boss? Oh no, you got enslaved too! What a bummer. After checking another boss yeah. off the list, I spent the rest of the day in that general area catching bee guards. As it got dark, I also captured my first Mossanda. Now that I finally made myself some cold resistant metal armor, I could explore some of the snowy areas for the first time. As I made my way towards the fast travel and boss tower, I started tussling with a Rangerix. Hey bro, can you not freeze me like that? Alright? You know what? Just shut up and get in the sphere. I should also mention the rude awakening I got when I realized that there was a much larger snowy mountain range to the north. Bruh, how big is this map? I started making my way down the hill in that direction, but got distracted when I found a quartz deposit. Oh, I see. They're all so conveniently placed in the harder to reach areas. I continued my expedition north until I found a fast travel, which I used to go back home. There, I placed down two more incubators because my egg situation was getting dire. After dark, I began making circuit boards. Good golly, these are gonna take forever. It was all worth it when I set up the upgraded version of the sphere assembly line the next day. Look at how state of the art it is. I can't wait to waste away in front of this thing to refill my supply of spheres every five days. Well, since I used almost all of my stuff to make that new conveyor, I headed back to my umpteenth cave to exploit it for minerals. There were also mouths in there, which I made sure to catch for the XP. Another day, another chance to give myself scoliosis with all this mining I'm doing. I also finally got around to making a quiver zone. Battle. I assumed this dude was going to be really fast because it was hard to catch. Right, guys? <laughs> Right? This turned out to be false when I fought the Mamorist boss on my new steed. The Quivern was slow, but he did pack a punch. It was painful, but I did manage to secure the catch after a hard-fought battle. After that, I went up to the marsh place with all the gob fins and caught as many as I could until I got the 10 catch bonus. There was a boss arena entrance right there, so I decided, screw it, why not, and went for it. The boss there, Warsec, was cool. Not cool enough to beat David Goggins, but he was still very cool nonetheless. Day 60 began with another ethnic cleansing. I mean, battle. It was a battle that ended with them all dead and me stealing their caged van worm. There were so many black spots on the map and I needed to make sure they disappeared. Back to exploring. As I explored centrally, I found another huge Verda egg and later also found a huge dragon egg. What? 
these exist? I'm excited to hatch it! Found myself over by the Battalion Boss Arena again, and decided to catch 10 Cinemoths all on one trip. This was a great feeling, I got so much XP from it. Day 61, I began a stream, and to entertain the guests, I tried doing something diabolical. It's no secret that you can catch humans in this game, which is part of the reason it's so great, but I had some plans for these guys. Oh, you bet I did. At a certain point as I was doing this, the camp straight up despawned along with all the dudes I was trying to catch. That was so unfortunate. At first I thought the thugs would be able to mine, so I set up another base around some coal deposits, but then realized all of them could only do handiwork. Nope, they can only- they're only good for handiwork. That's fine. That's- that's kind of unfortunate though. What was I gonna do with these guys then? Of course I was gonna put them to work, but where? Ideally, I wanted it to be somewhere very uncomfortable, so I returned to the snowy area to scout. I guess at night it's too cold up there, even though I had the resistant armor, so I left before I could freeze to death. Hey, you know what else would be an uncomfortable spot? That volcano I haven't explored yet. First, I had to make the armor that would keep me from burning to death up there. For that, I needed more wool. Okay, Mr. King Packa, I'm gonna have to take your skin. Nothing personal, I'm just gonna use it to make some clothes that I can build a sweatshop in comfortably. Now it's time to begin exploring the volcano, since I needed a nice spot to build the sweatshop in. I came across a Reptiro and began fighting it, but I quickly got double teamed and had to flee. I also found this wild Fangalope going for a swim. He didn't seem to mind, but God sure did. I tried to be all cool and send the volcano all the way to the top with Orion, but at a certain point I agreed I was just wasting time. I used my Quivern to fly the rest of the way up, and boy that was slow. I fast travel and went back home to start crafting a beacon saddle. Hopefully this would be faster. I decided to set up shop on top of the volcano over by the boss tower. It was a pack of Toka Tokos nearby that got a little too close, so I showed them how to eat small metal objects traveling at the speed of sound. With those heathens out of the way, I could build my sweatshop in peace. I set up a logging site on the first floor, but it didn't really look good with the Pal box there, so I moved it to the second floor. I gotta make this base even higher, but as I put in walls, I need to remember one very important detail. No windows. I can't have any fresh air getting inside now. After installing the final walls, I set up a bunch of primitive workbenches lining the room. I think you can see where this is going. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. I'll set up a feed box too. Can't have the thugs dying on me. I still need them to do meaningless labor. What kind of meaningless labor, you might ask? They're gonna make me a bunch of arrows. That's why I have the logging and mining site for endless arrows. Actually don't need arrows anymore, but they don't know that. I noticed a Reptiro chilling out right next to the sweatshop, so I caught him. These guys were amazing at kindling, so I took him to the mining base and set him loose. Towards the end of the day, I returned to the main base to make a Ragnarok saddle, since my chat insisted that it was a faster mount than anything I had used up until that point. I also crafted my first ever Ultra Spheres and briefly talked to my chat about the horrific lore of Love Anders. So apparently, some of the pals in this game, they're called Love Anders. I read about them. Yeah, so apparently, they're lecherous. <laughs> they, uh, very horny, evidently. It's really, it's really disturbing. <laughs> it's why they attack your base. It's because they're fans of you. They're going after you. Guys, guys, the dragon egg is about to hatch. I can't wait to see what I get. Bruh. That is so disappointing. Did I just get scammed? I made some more hyperspheres and decided to go on another boss hunt. My first target was a lizard bee, a giant, well, bee. That is mean when I hit it, so it hits me back. Also, her minions are insane. They all rushed at me and tried to explode. If I make a joke about this, they'll probably delete my channel. The next up on the hit list was Wumpo Baton. A weird name, honestly. It sounds dumb, guys. Get a load of this nerd's stupid name. Guys, don't make fun of his name. He's super strong. He cleared out most of my pals. And even after I got him low, it took nearly all of my Ultra Spheres to catch him. Even though I was low on my supply of high quality spheres, I was a bit bold and went after another boss. This Violet, or however you pronounce it, was very strong and absolutely domed my bushy, so I whipped out Orion to help me. Unfortunately, my last Ultra Sphere didn't work, but I somehow managed to catch it first try with a Hypersphere, despite the fact there was only a 3% chance of this actually working for me. Guys, I don't even know how my luck works anymore. <laughs> That's right, my pretties. <laughs> Go to work. I went back to the volcano on day 66 and took a moment to enjoy the view. Wait a minute, isn't that my tower over there? No way. 
I love this game. Well, time to again do what I probably spent most of this video doing, exploring. But now there's a bunch of lava, so it's cooler, right? This time I'm not catching pals, though. I still haven't replenished my sphere supply. As I explored, I discovered yet another faction of NPCs. Brothers of the Eternal Pyre, they're called. Still, they seem to have similarities with the other human enemies. They don't seem to appreciate it too much when I hurl a ball of water the size of planet Mars at them. <laughs> I found another field boss, a level 50 jet dragon. I may be dumb sometimes in games, but I kept my distance. I mean, 10,000 health, no way I could fight that thing anytime soon. My expedition went on, and I should mention that I was picking up a lot of fire eggs. It soon got dark, but since I was nowhere near a fast travel, I just continued my adventure. I followed the coastline the next day until I finally found a new fast travel point. I took it back home so I could put the legion of eggs I had collected into storage. Yeesh. I really gotta hatch all of these. It had been a fat minute since I went to the metal base, so I stopped by to grab some ingots before heading back home for the night. Hey, I haven't used the medicine workbench yet. Yet, have I? I began making some high-grade medical supplies since some of my pals were in a weakened condition. What better to cure weakness than some random drug I made? Boy howdy, these are gonna take a long time to make. Okay, I don't have the patience for this. Just the one will be fine for now, right? There was still a bunch of unexplored area in some of the more central parts of the map, and you know we can't have that. So I wandered through that section, capturing a bunch of arsoxes and gale claws as I went, Oh, hello, mammarist. Lovely day we're having. Lovely day to be enslaved. I continued exploring and came across this area with a ton of these lift monk effigies lying around. These things are nice because if I collect enough, I can increase my catching power at that pal upgrade statue thingy. I return to that fast travel next to the lava area on day 69 to continue exploring along the southwestern coast. There were some incinerams and dew muds here that I caught for some extra experience. Eventually, I discovered a fishing village, which by itself wasn't anything super special. I couldn't help but notice that one of the merchants here sold ammo. That will be very helpful later. I continued to investigate the area before eventually heading back to go on another research resource run in a low-level cave. You know, I'd be getting better rewards if I ran a higher level cave, but meh. I finished incubating some eggs the next day and they gave me some pyrin variants. Or to put it in simpler words, different types of fire horses. After making some carbon fiber and cement, I set up another improved furnace, this time at the main base. This was purely just to smelt charcoal quicker since I needed charcoal to make carbon fiber. It was high time that I refilled my very empty supply of spheres as well, so I did just that. This time it was mostly higher quality spheres though. I know I talked about running a higher level level cave dungeon, but now it's actually time to act. This one I visited, unsurprisingly, had free PAL Alliance members in it instead of syndicate peeps. There were also quite a few new PALs in there. Like exploding bees! No, no, oh no, please, I'm sorry! The dungeon boss was a loot boon, catching him was no problem. After leaving the cave, there was a new kind of flying pal I had never seen before. I managed to catch it in the sphere, but for some reason it didn't go into my inventory. Then I realized I had too many pals once again. Well, time to sell them into the slave trade! Oh hey, I didn't see you there. Don't mind me, I'm still selling pals and being extra thorough. Dude, 60,000 gold coins from selling pals? Hell yeah, I'm rich! <laughs> Then I was off exploring again, this time at a northwestern island. I quickly noticed that this was another low level area once I saw the pals that were spawning here. I encountered another boss arena with a felbat boss. I beat the crap out of it and caught it. Enough said. Eventually I had enough adventure for one day and I returned to the main base and finally began working on putting a roof over the sleeping area. The sloped ceilings are kinda whack and could only be placed on walls so I had to move the structures that were in the way. I was back on the road on day 72 and I can't stress how much of this map there seems to be. I wasn't prepared to see how huge this game was. Not a lot happened, honestly. I just explored until it got dark and fast traveled home. Day 73 and I'm still out filling in the map. This time I wanted to investigate the northern part of the volcano and I honestly wasn't ready to find the ruins of a huge castle there. Filling out the map was sort of my priority, but I made a note to go back and explore that later. At one point, I had to go back home and make another metal chest because I had that many eggs. I seriously gotta stop picking up every single one I find. There was this weird looking island off the coast of the south, so I decided to investigate. Turns out, it was definitely accessible. There were also a bunch of pals there that I had never seen before. Wait, those cops? 
What are they doing here? I'm sure it has nothing to do with trespassing, right? I decided to pick a tussle with some Terra Ectodere, or whatever you call them. I killed one, but managed to catch the other. At a certain point, the game told me in big letters that I was at a wildlife sanctuary. So you mean to tell me I just killed a protected species? That's awkward. I'm still exploring empty areas of the map on day 74 because it bothers me. Of course I'm catching pals as I go, I can be doubly efficient. I came across a Nightwing roaming boss at a lower level area, and since I already had 10 of these things, I just murdered it instead. Ah, the circle of life. As I continued north, the pals seemed to only require spheres that were of higher and higher qualities. This was unsurprising, and it also kept me from trying to capture anything. It just wasn't worth wasting resources on. At the end of the day, I began making a bunch of cement. There had to be a more efficient way of making this stuff. Why aren't my pals helping me? Still crafting cement? No, oh, seriously, where are all my pals? I tried to start crafting carbon fiber, but there were some glaring issues about my base that I had to address. Pals were getting stuck on my structures without roofs, and my crafting hub wasn't really great for the pals' AI to navigate. So step one was to actually finish the ceilings. I don't know why I put this off. Next step was to modify my crafting hub. The current design with the stairs clearly wasn't working, so I began tearing down walls and putting up some easier access stairs. It looked like crap, but I was sick of crafting everything by myself. Fortunately, these new changes seemed to work wonders as some of the pals with the handiwork trait immediately got to work crafting carbon fiber. I still wasn't done with base modifications, however. I repositioned my sphere assembly line so I could make a hole in the wall for easier pal access. Then I put an actual roof in. Would you believe it? I know. Crazy. With all the cement I had crafted, I also finally finished the wall around the perimeter. There were a bunch of older structure variants that I simply wasn't using anymore, so I got rid of them. This actually freed up a crazy amount of space. The remainder of the day was entirely dedicated to grinding for metal and coal so that I could get even more reinforced ingots. I was so close to being a high enough level to craft a shotgun, so I caught a bunch of Mossandas and Gora rats near my coal deposit until I had captured 10 of each. This gave me the experience I needed to level up, which means... I can get a boomstick. Okay, now that I get a better look at my revamped crafting hub, it looks terrible. Honestly, I don't really care as long as it works. After crafting a bunch of ultra spheres, I finally did it! I made a shotgun! I couldn't wait to use this on the innocent! I was feeling pretty confident on day 78 and decided to go fight another boss tower. As soon as I arrived at the snowy biome, I was attacked by a Rangrix because I looked tasty or something. Kaboom, baby! Not a Goggins watch! Now, it's time for me to see what this boss has got in store for me. Uh, yeah, take that, nerds. Teabag of shame. I explored some more, interacting with any fast travel I came across. I also decided to fight this other dungeon boss that was in the area. It died too, but I honestly don't care that much. Eventually, it got way too cold for me, and I barely managed to escape it before dying. So I returned home to sleep and recover. Day 79, I ran another intermediate cave dungeon for the resources and pals to capture for XP. After killing the boss and leaving the cave, I went back to that fishing village to sell the goods. I used this money to buy even more ammo for my shotgun because violence is cool. Fun. I have the levels to make an even better boomstick. I know what I have to do. Uh, 
I tried to reposition the advanced furnace at the main base so that it would be inside, but the game wasn't letting me for some reason. Come on, game just let me hotbox my base with toxic fumes. Why are my pals getting stuck on top of my statue? I swear they all have three collective brain cells. I moved the statue over by my tower and that seemed to help resolve the issue. Also, why are pals always inside my tower? That is my tower. I moved the doors to a different spot and closed them. Hopefully this will fix that. Then I paid another visit to my homies at the sweatshop. Haha, <laughs> I see you guys have finished your work. That must mean I can give you even more, right? <laughs> I tried to go on another catching spree, but then I got cocky and this ripped hero set me on fire with low health. As I tried making a run for it, I burned to death. Mmm. <laughs> I attempted to get my stuff back, but died over a lava pool, which also got my fangalope killed since he was just chilling there. Idiot. I respawned at the mining base, but for some reason I was on fire? I jumped off a cliff in order to respawn again, this time without catching fire. I finally managed to recover my things on my Ragnarok before I could burn to death and spent the rest of the day grinding for coal. Day 81, it's time to slave away over the sphere assembly line again. Guys, someone please send help, please. Remember that quartz deposit I mined? Well, I needed a lot more quartz if I was gonna keep upgrading my assembly line. So it was back to the northern areas of the map to look for some more. Why can't I find any quartz? Please, please game, just give me quartz. I returned home to use the little quartz I did find to make some more circuit boards. Unfortunately, this amount would be nowhere near enough. I guess it's back to the scoliosis forming process of mining coal. I still need a lot of refined metal ingots on top of that pre-existing need for quartz. Yes, yes, I found quartz. Yes, yes, precious, we need the nasty quartzes. Mother nature hates the smell of. It's also worth noting that I can across a chest that gave me my first golden key, which would help unlock other high quality chests in these northern late game areas. There was also yet another new group of NPCs I encountered on my travels, the Pal Genetic Researchers. Not a very friendly bunch, I'll try to avoid them. As I continued exploring along the razor sharp peaks in the north, I found the boss tower with a fast travel up there. I took it back home and started making more polymer, but then I ran out of pal oil. Dude, seriously? There was only one place that I knew that had the oil I needed, which was the large area of land where the Relaxaurus is spawned. I spent a bunch of time hunting them and catching Wooly Pops so I could get closer to that sexy 10 catch bonus. Uh, another cave. I did find a bunch of Noxes there, which I didn't have a lot of, so you know what I had to do. Aside from that, I was mining that juicy Paldium as per usual. Also, check it out. A Wooly Pop boss. That's convenient. Get caught, idiot. Day 83, I'm still hunting stuff for pal oil. Since I was in the area, I caught mazarinas until I had 10 of them. I don't know why I haven't done that sooner, but whatever. Wait a minute, I don't think I've caught 10 serpents yet either. How did I miss out on all this XP? I can't let myself get distracted. I need to continue killing the stupid blue dudes. There's a word here that begins with a G that comes to mind, but I don't think the YouTube terms of service will like it if I say that word. Holy guacamole, this game is bringing out my hedgy side. Tone it down there, chew. When I finally traveled back home, I finished incubating some eggs and began crafting loads of polymer. Okay, maybe not that much polymer. This makes me sad. The following morning, I made a whole whopping 15 circuit boards. Ladies, ladies, one at a time. Uh, I'm gonna die alone. With those circuit boards, I upgraded my production assembly line to the next improved version. With it, I made for myself a Giga Glider, since for some reason I hadn't bothered to make a glider up until now. Oh my gosh, more coal! This reminds me of the kids in the mine under my house. I should probably feed them. That was a joke, FBI. I'm back on the trail hunting Relaxauruses on day 85. Yippee! I also ran another cave for Paldium, but that's so much less interesting. Next, I paid another visit to the fishing village so I can sell my mega shield for more buckshot. Now you might be asking yourself, but Chufi, why would you sell your shield? I'll tell you why. I'm making an even better one at home, that's why. Plus, who wouldn't sell their soul for shotgun ammo? What a dumb question. After sunset, I constructed an electric kitchen as well as two large pal beds in the sleeping area so I could level up my base. I'm back to my exploring ways on day 86, and of course it's in the northernmost mountains. Really, not a lot happened as I filled in more of the map. Notably, I did catch a bunch of cryolinxes for the XP, but I didn't really have the resources or high enough leveled pals to be able to do much. I picked up a lot of chests too, some of which had some very useful looking gun schematics. I also came across a frost stallion field boss. Dude, that thing looks amazing. I want it. 
I'm too weak to fight it right now, of course, but a man can dream. Day 87, I'm doing the same exact thing. Not much to see here. I did make an effort to pick up any lift monk effigies and chests I came across, which gave me even more gun blueprints. Day 88, I got encumbered while on a coal mining spree. I can't really make it anywhere if I'm moving like this, so sacrifices must be made. It pains me to drop this stuff since I need it, but it must be done. Or I could just upgrade weight like a smart person. After making some more pal spheres, I fast traveled to that huge desert area from before to start exploring there. By this point, I was at a high enough level to catch these pals, so that's exactly what I did. Turns out they wanted to be realistic about the temperature in the desert because I began freezing as night fell. Unfortunately, I was very far from the nearest fast travel and I ended up dying before I could even get close. Getting my stuff back was easy since I had gold resistant armor at home. All I had to do was throw it on, find the spot where I died, and baba booey. My desert expedition resumed the next day. As I journeyed forth through the sand, Orion hit level 40 and learned this really funny ice attack. As I continued on catching pals left and right, I eventually found another NPC settlement nestled in the dunes. I talked to some of the police officers standing outside and something about the way they spoke about their leader seemed kinda funny. I'll bet he's the guy I got a fight in the boss tower. I did notice that this merchant here is selling pal oil, so how about that? I bought a whole bunch of it and returned home to turn it all into polymer. After making some more carbon fiber on day 90, I had everything I needed to build an electric furnace. Of course, I had to put it outside the mining base because it won't let me build these things indoors. After going on yet another caving spree to grab all the paldium I could find, I brought it all back to the mining base so I could smelt it into the newly available pal ingots. Then I made the ultimate weapon at the main base, a sword. Aw oh, man, David Goggins has a sword. Day 91, I made a Suzaku saddle so I could see if this was a better flying mount than the Ragnarok. Also, I may have forgotten the fact that the electric furnace I had built the previous day was in fact an electrical generator that needed electricity. So, uh, that never happened, okay guys? This generator was always there. Then it was off to this weird ancient ruins looking place in the north to one, explore, and two, test out my Suzaku. Let me just say that this thing was freaking awesome. There wasn't much to see up north, so it was back to the desert to continue filling in the map. Exploring, enslaving, blah blah, you all know the drill. Eventually, I ran out of all my better pal spheres, so I had to resort to using giga spheres. This meant using up a whole bunch while trying to catch things, but honestly, it wasn't that big of a deal to me. Nothing super interesting happened for the most part on day 92. Just a whole lot of exploring. Eventually, I did make my way back to a fast travel where I saw an Elizabeth. I wanted to catch it, but I kinda ended up sending it to Jesus instead. She's in a better place now. Then I kinda just went home and made cement. It was just one of those kinds of days. And I'm still crafting cement? How exciting! I ran some more caves for the Paldium and coal, then sold a bunch of valuables to get even more boomstick ammo. You know, it's been a while since I've been up here on the Tower of Truth. Sometimes it's nice to just take a moment and relax on top of a ridiculously tall tower and assert dominance on everyone. Eventually I came back down to make even more carbon fiber, which eventually was used to craft more ultra spheres. And I'm still crafting ultra spheres. How exciting! Wait, I already said that, but with the cement. I'm running out of jokes. I was feeling pretty good about myself, so I decided to pick a fight with the Jormantide field boss. My Suzaku wasn't so lucky because she got absolutely wrecked by its water beam. Eventually, I think I strayed a bit too far away because it had retreated and completely healed. Bruh. At this point, I didn't care. I just started fighting it again. This fight went pretty well, all things considered. Until it died, that is. I went back home depressed and had to reorganize my pals because somehow they keep getting stuck on my tower. Screw this. I'm going to bed. Once again, I was super low on carbon fiber, so I set up my advanced furnace to make a lot of charcoal for me while I did other things. I returned to the desert feeling quite mischievous and began fighting the Suzaku field boss. This one went a lot smoother than the Jormantide boss fight and I was able to catch it in the end. Then I went after the next desert field boss I could find, a menace sting. In the middle of the fight my shotgun broke so I had to resort to using my sword instead. It nearly took every single one of my ultra spheres to catch, but I did secure the capture in the end. Back at home I made some carbon fiber and polymer, then used some of it to repair my gun. Then I realized I was out of paldium, so it's time to visit the cave dungeons again. It's fine, grinding is in character for me in this video. Or, I should say, in character for David Goggins. 
It's probably worth mentioning that I bought a whole bunch of pal oil from a merchant again, too. I would need to make even more polymer soon. I made my first batch of legendary pal spheres on day 96, and this took a long time to do. After that task was completed, I gave the Jormantide boss another go, this time in a different location. I don't know why there were two Jormantides, there just were. This time also went a lot better for me, since I did end up catching him, too. Yeah! Scary water snake time! Before I could ride it, I needed to make the saddle, obviously, which required more pallium. Uh, <laughs> Day 97, I made the German tide saddle, which means it's snake time! I rode him to another wild animal sanctuary off the coast of the volcano island. For some reason, I thought my German tide would be a lot faster as a mount, but I guess I learned my lesson. At least he packs a punch. At the sanctuary, I got a few pals, but most of them were in tight-knit groups and large numbers with high levels, so picking a fight was a little too risky. As long as I'm discreet, the cops will never know. You know what? I'm feeling pretty good right now. I'm gonna go catch that Frostallion. Oh no! Oh no! This was a horrible idea! This was a mistake! A mistake! I'm sorry! Well... We're just gonna pretend like that never happened. I was never here, nor did I get absolutely decimated. David Goggins may return another day. I don't know why, but I was in a boss fighting mood. I went to the boss tower at the volcano and began the fight. You know, this fight wasn't going too bad. Then the dude whipped out this weird trident attack and absolutely ended me. I was kind of bored after that fight, so I just got some more pals in the desert. After returning home, I made some polymer and realized I was at a level where I could craft an assault rifle now. It took a minute scrapping all the material together, but I finally made it at the end of the day. I spent half of the money I had, which was a bit over 100 grand, completely on assault rifle ammo. I wanted to check out the Desert Boss Tower to see if it was any easier than the volcano one. My hopes weren't high, but it couldn't hurt to look. The fight was going okay, but I ran out of ammo at one point and eventually ran out of time, too. Damn, two failed boss fights in a row. 
that blows. I went to the smaller desert to go fight the Anubis field boss, and this guy was so cool. The way he just teleported around on top of the way he looked, so cool. Catching him was really annoying. It took almost every single one of my legendary spheres, but in my opinion, the capture was worth it. Well, now it's day 100, and honestly, there's so much more I have yet to accomplish. There was still one last thing I wanted to try before the video ends. I paid a visit to a free pal alliance camp and captured some of the enemies here. Next, I put down a breeding pen at the mining base. I think you can see where this is going. I gathered up all the ingredients I needed to make a cake, then tried to put my plan into action. Alas, I soon learned you can't breed the human NPCs in this game. It was still a funny idea though. Instead, I just decided to breed two other random pals just for the sake of doing it and waited for them to give me an egg. Well, there's no way I can hatch this thing considering it's day 100. As anticlimactic as that ending was, I really enjoyed this game. Like I said in the intro, like the video if you want to see me play more PAL World. That's all for now, fellas. I'll see you in Ark Ragnarok. Get this thing to 5,000 likes and I'll play this game for 200 days.